Hello everyone, I'm Matthew Warchus. I'm the Artistic Director of the Old Vic Theatre and thank you for watching this Voices Off event being brought to you digitally for the first time. And thanks too to the members of the Monster Calls team who've joined me today. And that's Patrick Ness, who's the author, and Sally Cookson, the director, Adam Peck, who's the writer in the room, Selena Cadell, who played Grandma, and Matthew Tennyson, who played Connor. So welcome to you all. Thanks so much for doing this. It's great to see you all again. Um, an absolutely staggeringly brilliant book um, that became a staggeringly brilliant um, stage production uh, by all of you together. And one of the real highlights for me of my time as an artistic director at the Old Vic was having you all uh, work with us and, the, and Bristol Old Vic as well in, in bringing this piece to the stage. So, but if you just jump back a little bit first, Patrick, do you want to tell us how you ca it came to, um, came about that you wrote the novel? Uh, yeah, there was a tremendous writer for young people called Siobhan Dowd, who wrote four really great uh, YA novels, which you should all, all should look for and look up. They're really terrific, um, including Bog Child and uh, Swift Pure Cry, those kinds of books. Um, and this was meant to be her fifth book. But she wrote all of those four books knowing that she had breast cancer and knowing that it was terminal. So she wrote them as quickly as she could. At my publisher, Walker Books, we shared an editor uh, called Denise Johnstone Burt and A Monster Calls was the next in the queue and sadly Siobhan uh, passed away before even you know she thought she would and our shared editor did not want the idea to disappear uh, because it was such a it was a beginning this little sprout but it was such a potent thing that my editor brought it to me and said would you consider taking this idea and um, turning it into a book and I initially said no because I worry most that you know, a, a book has to be a book, it can be a memorial. And because she, Siobhan Dowd is such a clever writer, uh, she would never have written a memorial. So I, I was going to say no. Um, but then the ideas started sprouting other ideas, which is how I always know that there's a potential book there because a good idea grows other ideas. And I had the idea of, Siobhan had uh, a monster figure, Connor and Lily and a mother, and uh, the idea that this monster figure would tell three tales, although she didn't say what the tales were, she said she had the tales and was really excited about them, but didn't write them down. Um, and uh, so I started thinking about it. And the first idea I had was what becomes the centerpiece of the book and which is the right at the, just before the interval in the play of the scene in the grandmother's sitting room. And I thought that feels like a book that feels like real power there. That's everything that I, would want to write about, you know, the, the transgression, the real raw emotion, the destructiveness of raw emotion. And so I thought, okay, there's something here. And I, so I, my idea was that I would do what Siobhan Dowd would have done, which is let the story grow and see where it went. Not try to guess what she would do, but just let it grow. And um, unexpectedly out came A Monster Calls. And then Jim Kay did the illustrations for the book. And so I always say that there's three of us in the book. All of us hope, trying to bring our best thing to the book. And hopefully if we all do that, then it becomes something bigger than the three of us. And uh, so, yeah, a, a unique experience. Um, and uh, one that I'm super proud to have been part of. I think if I'm lucky enough to be remembered at all, I expect it'll be for Monster Calls. And that is 100% fine by me. Um, a really unexpected blessing to a career. Well, it's a very unusual way for a book to come about. And it's a very unusual book. It's, I, I think it's, um, when I read it, it completely, uh, wiped me out uh, emotionally. And I think it's because it's the astonishing maturity of it um, for a book that speaks uh, equally to young people and old people. It's a, it has a level of maturity of thought and emotion in it and daring and risk that you just don't, you just don't find in, in very many books of, for any age group. Um, but yeah, sadly, but I, I I yes. wanted to be, I'm sorry, I just wanted it to be, to me, the truth of it was the most important thing, that it's a book, a story about someone who has guessed 90% of the truth correctly, but it's that extra 10% where you get it wrong, where, when no one is explaining to you the things you already know, um, that is the real problem. So I, I felt it would have been dishonest to be, you know, to, to sugarcoat it in any way. Um, mm. 
yeah so that's all sorry you're going to sally yeah. which you should have <laughs> no no that's that's really great it's a massive massive piece of work a huge achievement um so sally it's quite interesting story how you came to be directing this i mean because it's a book that you had also fallen in love with and um that's right well um I was rehearsing another play at the Bristol Old Vic um, several years ago now. And an actor friend of mine, Sarah Goddard, who was in the company, had just finished reading it and she brought it in one day and said, you have got to read this book. So I took it away and um, read it in, in one shot, you know, over a weekend uh, without stopping. And it had such an impact on me. And I knew immediately that I wanted to be given the opportunity to turn it into a piece of theatre. And I spoke to Tom Morris about it at Bristol Ovic. About it and we discovered, uh, we did a bit of research and discovered that the rights weren't available, uh, much to my kind of disappointment. But I, I couldn't stop thinking about it. And I kept it in my bag for, for several years and I bought it as gifts for friends and I told people about it. And I think I had a conversation with you, Adam, about it, saying, I really want to make this with you. and. Uh, it just it just wasn't happening. And then I was invited to come and have a meeting with you, Matthew. Um, I can't remember when that was. It was. I think it was before Christmas at some point. I remember climbing up to your office and it was a cold day outside. And, and you went through a list of titles that you were interested in making at the Old Vic. Uh, and at the top of your list that you had the rights for, was a monster calls and I nearly fell through the floor because I had it in my bag I'd been carrying it around <laughs> and before you got through the, the list of the books I said yes please can we do it and it's interesting that Patrick was talking about Jim Kay's illustrations because that's the version I read you know th this incredible illustrated version with with these wonderful um, pen and ink illustrations that that were as important to me as Patrick's wonderful words and those illustrations really inspired the design of the piece the aesthetic of, of the storytelling that the space of the white page and the very precise illustrations uh, kind of fed into how we staged the production we didn't want it I didn't want it cluttered with a whole load of um, naturalistic set so so they were as much an inspiration as, as everything else and that really, my next question actually was something that Selena and Matthew and Adam and, and Sally, you can all join, and Patrick, if you want to chip in all equally, but it's about the process, because it, so you, <clears throat> you had a series of workshops and sort of development process uh, for this. Do you want to just remember some of, how some of that went? Well, well, there was a long process, actually. And, and again, that was, that was part of the... Um, oh, the real kind of investigation into how this was going to be turned into a piece of theatre is you you agreed uh, to a two-week workshop which often doesn't happen you know we only usually get a couple of days or a week uh, but we had a two-week workshop which was actually two years before we went into rehearsals um, and uh, that's that's the that was the sort of starting point for us and after that two-week workshop we then Adam and I spent some time um, responding to what had happened in the workshop and put a, a document in place as you can talk about uh, what we what we put together before we went into rehearsals. Yeah well, so we make a working script which essentially is a, a, a document that attempts to break the book down into workable chunks that can be dramatized. Um, obviously in a novel you often get stuff that's talked about that's happened in the past and you've got to make that current in some way so there's a shifting around of material uh, that has to be done. Um, and also considerations like at the beginning of the book, you have the monster arrive and then you hear about the nightmare, which are two massive, you know, things with theatrical potential. And we wanted to shift meeting the monster to a bit later in the book. So there's, there are big, there are big structural things that we, that we wanted to, that we considered. But in creating a working document, what that is, is essentially a, a very, very rough blueprint of the book that breaks it down into chunks that we could take it to rehearsals. Um, but that's some dialogue taken from the book, a lot of great dialogue taken from the book, in fact. Um, and then 
those scenes are, are given over to the actors um, to play with, to to run with, um, uh, to 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 create, to play. Um, we read the book again. We don't we don't read the script actually. That's just there as a as a guide. Um, we read the book, go back to the book, and then the actors get up on their feet and and create. And then I capture what what they what they create, and it's a it's a real a real collaboration between everyone who's involved in the room. Uh, it, sorry, everyone who's in the room and involved um, making decisions about what goes into into the work. Uh, whilst also always referencing back to the book. So yeah, we just we take a a working script into the room to start playing with. And that's a, a way that you and Sally have worked before. Um, and um, with Selena and Matthew, is that, were you involved in, in the, at that point in the workshops? I did a workshop in Bristol uh, two years before we went into rehearsal in London. Um, and it was the first time I'd ever done any sort of devising of any sort of pub and drama score really. But never from uh, like a source material, like a book or anything. Um, and uh, yeah, it's amazing. I mean, the, the the room that Sally creates is so unique and special. You've got all these people working alongside. You've got Dan Kahneman, Benji and Will, who did the music. Um, and they're all sort of making it happen around you. And Sally's sort of in the centre of it all. And it's a really special atmosphere. Um, and you feel very... Uh, very, very sort of encouraged to share your instincts, and everyone's everyone's opinion is is useful and valuable and encouraged. So um, it's really it's a wonderful way of working. You know, I'd spent about forty years avoiding two things: <laughs> one was physical theatre, and the <laughs> other was improvisation. <laughs> but it's as equally a, a part of my character not to really, you know, I, I I say that, but actually the opportunities haven't arisen that much. Because actually, when a gauntlet is thrown down, I'm, I'm always keen to pick it up. But I had actually seen Jane Eyre, and I just thought, well, that that's what I want to do. I want I want to do that. I want to work with that person who created that team, and that ex astonishing storytelling power, because that's what excites me about theatre. So when uh, my agent rang me up and she said, and the strangest thing of all was that I'd coached Sigourney Weaver playing. Uh, my part, grandma, in the film. But when I say coach, that sounds a bit... Um, the point is that we have a working relationship. I'm not sure I should have said all that, actually. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> right, it's it. so interesting. So I knew the story. I knew everything about it. And I just thought, well, this is extraordinary. I mean, I know this, I know... This. But, of course, my heart, it's actually doing what I felt then, which was like, God, but I'd have to do physical stuff and I was you know 30 years older than anybody else in this thing and I arrived on day one I saw all these beautiful lithe young creatures all completely in their kind of outfits all ready to and Sal and, and I had this lovely meetings with Sal and of course the other thing I do have to say which is really vital to my parting my, my part in it was that it came at a time when my husband was dying of cancer now, rather than that being, oh, can't go there, I just saw that as an extraordinary sign. And Sally's understanding of my position of that was key. And I thought, my God, she understands and she's going to bring that understanding. Because I didn't want to be involved in anything that did not have the kind of heart that the book and, you know, everything that I'd already associated with the story had. And I know many directors who wouldn't have been able to strip themselves open and it's cut a long story short, there I was on that day. And I, you know, oh my God, it was terrifying. It was absolutely terrifying. I, I've never, you know, felt so challenged. And I've also never felt so excited because Sally's honesty, just the ability to say, I have no idea what we can do, but we had this idea. Let's try something different. The cancel and continue, the trust, the astonishing um, openness made you feel you could say anything at any point. And it would just be, uh, it would just be harvested up in, into the extraordinary building of this huge, I mean, for goodness sake, a drama school, you, you joke about becoming a tree. <laughs> 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 actually, what you, you don't really want to have to do those tree productions. And there we were, we were actually making a tree. I think the, looking at the archive videos that, uh, like Monster Calls and the, the other ones that we've been putting out, Whenever I see at the moment, it's just a very interesting thing. Whenever you see the shots of an audience, 
together. And you see hundreds of people sitting there together. And it's suddenly quite shocking and moving, overwhelming to see the closeness and to see us all taking it for granted so much and the power of that. Um, so it's going to be those first few weeks, months maybe, of theatre coming back are going to be a very, very extraordinary thing. I think an enormous amount of gratitude and release just to be able to be together and, mm. and absorbing stories one form or another. Because we all know that theatre has this extraordinary um, secret power to, to heal and um, protect people from really difficult challenges in life, give them a degree of strength for it. And this production is one perfect example of that. So thank you for making the first place. Thank you for letting us share it now at a time when there's a lot of healing that um, needs to be happening. Um, and I really appreciate it. It's lovely to see you all. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for asking us. Yeah. See you on the other side, everyone. Yeah, see you on the other side. Thanks, really. Thanks guys. Bye-bye. Yeah.